2014 East, Town of East, uh, East Fishfield Town Board Work Session. This is where the Town Board actually gets together to discuss matters of importance to the town. Uh, would you please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Uh, first item on the agenda is supervisor's announcements. Uh, I believe last week, must have been last week, we were talking about Route 82, New York State DOT has notified us that they're planning on replacing the temporary bridge on Route 82. We remember how well that went three or four years ago. Uh, we did meet with DOT, expressed to them our concerns again. They will try to make an alternate route through All Angels and Old Hope while they're going to be meeting with the county. And this is actually very preliminary, but they are looking to do that project. So we're going to see how long that time frame is. And wouldn't you know it, while you're talking about bridges, we get a notice from Dutchess County. Dutchess County has decided that they're going to close the Palin Road Bridge for work. So I don't have the letter with me, but the Palin Road Bridge uh, will be closed starting April 28th for six to eight weeks. There's going to be notices. We're going to get more information. We'll be going on the website. It looks like it must be like a bridge year or something like that. We're wow. fixing all the bridges. Um, and hopefully it's only going to be six to eight weeks. Uh, our engineer is not with us tonight. Uh, we had discussed this with the county oh, probably two or three years ago, and they were actually going to do the work. So just to let everybody know, uh, we'll keep you posted, but Dutchess County is going to be closing Palin, Palin Road Bridge uh, on April 28th. Uh, always something to look forward to. Hopefully the job will go well. I don't know why they don't do it in the summertime when there's no school buses. I, it just right. dawns on me, but... No, no idea. So we'll see. Hopefully the job will go well. Uh, my only other announcement tonight is the Easter Egg Party uh, is this Saturday, April 12th. It starts at 11.30 a.m. at the East Fishkill Community Center. And it's put on by our East Fishkill Recreation and our East Fishkill PBA. So I'd like to thank Rec and I'd like to thank the PBA. Uh, I know the Easter Bunny is going to be there. I, Elmo might be there. I'm not really sure. But it should be a good time, and it starts at 11:30 at the East Fishkill Community Center. So that's all of my announcements for tonight. Uh, with that, we're going to get into the discussion portion of the meeting. Uh, the first item on the agenda is the Cannon Property Request for Proposals. Uh, this actually come up. We purchased the properties. Everybody knows across the street from the town hall, 147 acres. Uh, a couple years ago, and for one of the reasons we did purchase it was the need to provide senior housing. Um, at that time, and Tom, I believe you recall, at that time it's going to be a 220 unit senior project. Um, really, at this point, we're just looking to do it possibly as uh, an, up to an 80 units of senior housing to start off. And with the availability, maybe of doing a second phase if it works out. Um, everybody's got a copy of the RFP. I will ask to take a vote on circulating the RFP at our voting meeting at the end of the month. I wanted everybody to read the RFP, and if you have any questions, um, one thing that I think that the board will agree is we're going to we're going to do we're going to uh, sell the property to a developer. We want the developer to build senior housing project and being as we're doing it we want it done right which is really I think another reason not to do a huge project but to do a small project and make sure it's done correctly so I, I provide everybody's been provided with the RFP and I, if anybody has any questions on it um, I can answer them the attorney is here tonight he can answer them if you have any engineering questions the engineer is not with us tonight but between now and the voting meeting, if you have any questions, please feel free to, to, to come in and ask, obviously. So any thoughts tonight? Any, any questions on the RFP as it, as it sits before you? I had some thoughts. Sure. So we are going to try and do two phases. So potentially 140 to 160 units total. Could be possibly up to that. Yeah. What if the first phase is so successful? Can we do more than 80 in the second phase? Absolutely. The only constraints that we have at that site are the sewer plants here and our well fields are here and the creek is here. 
but basically within the amount of area that's available to us, and, and Tom knows we can actually create um, green spaces uh, by using, um, what would you call it, Tom? I'm trying to think of the term, uh, conservation easements. easements right. Mm -hmm. So that would protect our floodways, but they would right. still, we could still use that. And, and basically what the process is, is if you uh, authorize the circulation of this, uh, it's going to the four uh, pre-qualified people who submitted in the last rounds and then it comes back and then the board could choose which one they're interested in and it would actually be a real estate negotiation you would come to an agreement on terms um, then the board would authorize a contract of sale of this particular I think it's like 16 acres and that contract would be uh, contingent of course on the property being rezoned and for the developer being able to get the approvals for it and then once the contract was done, then the whole environmental process has to take place, the public hearings, the you know, rezoning if necessary, the plant. So it's full, the regular process, even though the town's selling the piece. Well, but we just discussed that, but I, I, I would say, Nick, that we could go up to that. I mean, I think we're, we, especially here in the Hamlet, we are very sensitive to density. Mm -hmm. um, but one of the things that is really, I do get a lot of calls from seniors, and you know, there's really no senior housing in our town. To provide, right. but what would happen if we built 60 units and that was all of the seniors housing that was necessary, you know? And then we could actually look to see if we'd like to make, say, the next phase would be available to workforce housing or some other. And I, to be honest with you, I don't even like to categorize it. I think seniors may be senior housing, but after that, I think just housing. I don't like to say where, I think it's just housing for everybody. You know, public house, not public house, that's no. another bad no, term, no, I no, guess, no. you know? <laughs> this would be own. privately right. owned. It would be privately owned by whoever yeah. buys it. Yeah. Well, why I ask is because I know that some of the senior housing in Fishkill has stalled a little bit. Yeah. But I talk to many people and a lot of seniors, the reason why it's not as desirable is because it's in a commercial type of zone. Mm -hmm. So this is a very more rural type of zone. It'll be more desirable, and yeah. I think that we're going to draw seniors from other towns not only ours wow it'll be interesting yeah. to see obviously we want to serve our seniors but it's great if we can serve you know the whole population so uh, and and I think it's great to get this going and and, and Tom when we send these we send the we're gonna send the RFP out to the pre-qualified the four pre-qualified companies correct they will respond to us and they will actually have their own ideas right they'll come back with a generic proposal yeah. as to the LB. To make the types, you know, yeah. one, two bedrooms, whatever they're proposing, yeah. and they'll make an offer to you, a uh, price for buying the land. Yeah. And the um, request for proposals includes um, dollar amounts that they would have to pay for the sewer infrastructure and water infrastructure to tie in. That's all set forth here. So that would be on top of whatever the purchase price that they offer. Yeah. Now, say they come back with a proposal and we don't like the proposal, as it stands, say it is, oh, 60 attached units or, you know, or something, maybe we'd want to see like detached units or different, different type of configuration. You're free to negotiate. When, when a, a town sells real property, uh, it's, it doesn't have to, it, you know, it's not like when we buy something, we have to bid and we have to use the lowest bidder. Right. On a real property sale, uh, it's more than just value. It's, it's what you want to get mm -hmm. developed on the property so you can negotiate all of that with okay. whatever developer you choose once you get those proposals. And, and I got to say, I think that's going to be very interesting to get these RFPs out to the pre-qualified uh, developers and see what they come back with. And then I think, you know, we'll sit down as a group um, and, and review these and then come up with, you know, we want to come back and say, gee, we like this part of your project, but could you change this part? Uh, I think this is just a fantastic opportunity. So, uh, again, the RFP, there's nothing binding to it, correct? Correct. We can send out the RFP. If we don't like any of the responses, we can throw them all out. We're not bound. Right. But I do think it is, is very important to start the process and get the RFPs out there. Yeah, I agree. And it will also leave you, in, when all said and done, over 100 acres of open space. So. Yes. That's, that's, we have a huge water resource, walking trails, 100 acres of open space, and hopefully we can serve our seniors and pay for the property. That, to me, is a home run. So, uh, well, that's why I asked. Uh, the more units you could put, the more valuable the property is, mm -hmm. right? So if the phase one goes so well, 
but after we enter into contract, that's it. We, no, 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 phase one is uh, you would actually be agreeing, what you would be doing is declaring approximately 16 acres of it at this time to be surplus property that we don't have any need for. So you would sell that and that would be the phase one. Now, uh, if that goes well, there's still perhaps other property that you would decide is surplus and you could sell that and that would be the phase two. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, so it's... We have a lot of flexibility yeah. okay. for the That's property great. and all right. that. So you have to evaluate it each time and decide. This is really the, the start. You know, we pre-qualified and this would be the start, so. Now, if people that aren't on the list of the four that this is going out to, are other people able to pick it up to? No, we pre-qualified, we sent them out, we notified, okay. uh, ran ads and all that last I year. I think they were, yeah. um, the last time it was advertised extensively and I think there were yeah. four, four or five that actually submitted yeah. Uh, yeah. proposals. Because where they're building a lot of seniors housing and it's filling just as quick as they're building it? Mm -hmm. is actually beacon because it's really the only one doing it. Mm -hmm. Well, and I, I, I got to agree with Councilman Everything Alessandro that being the rural area here, what I would like to see would be nice if we could get sidewalks into town, and, and I just think it'd be phenomenal. Uh, yeah, the conceptual. Draw. Yeah, yeah, the conceptual committee that you put together, they did excellent yeah. renderings. Yeah. And, and we would still be looking to them. I know. Uh, that, and that was one of the other things, too. We wanted to look to fit in, and I know that uh, Malcolm Mills is on our Historic Society. He's very, very helpful with making sure that, you know, we're going to make this look like it fits in with East Fish Hill with, uh, you know, very nice building, so it would be, you know, very pleasing and may hopefully a bit historic looking. That'll be the like drawer. That. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's going to be a great thing. So anybody have any other questions again our professionals are available um, but I would like to I will ask for a vote at the end of this month on sub circulating the RFP and getting the ball rolling so okay uh, I've seen some of the paperwork that the four companies that qualified that have kind of presented that's just preliminary that's not definite we're going to have just. to review and discuss yeah more of that yeah. come to a definite project once absolutely we, which is which is the interesting part for us because we are really actually in control of this project right. and I think uh, they did submit and they submitted some ideas but nothing right so I think we, we gives us a little a lot of flexibility here all right so if we're good with that um, again as speak with professionals you can contact me anytime and I'll, I'll be asking for a vote on the RFPs at the voting meeting uh, second on the uh, agenda, there's a couple of zoning laws uh, that I had asked the board to consider. Um, one of them <coughs> is to allow um, uh, assisted living in, in a B1 zone. There is a project that would like to come to a B1 zone on Route 52. Uh, the proposal is for assisted living, and they made a short presentation uh, here. They gave me a, a little brochure of what they propose. There's a few buildings. And uh, I'll see if I still have it. I'll make it available to everybody so you guys, so everybody could see what the, the proposal was. It was nothing. They just showed me really another project that they had done. But they're proposing two or three buildings of, uh, and it's going to be, I think, especially for Alzheimer's patients, very big on Alzheimer's patients, that type of assisted living, a significant, you know, amount of, of assisted living. Um, and not allowed in B1 zone. Uh, medical offices and things of that nature are allowed in a B1 zone. Uh, there's nothing that allows for an overnight stay in a B1 zone. So I had asked them for what kind of law they had in other towns, and they had given me this copy of the law, which I had forwarded to the board and to the town attorney uh, for alternate care housing. I'm not sure it really fits. I don't know if anybody has any thoughts on it. Um, I would like to see the assisted living allowed, but I think this is a bit much. Any, any thoughts on the law that was proposed? Well, I, I met with the town lawyer, I believe, yesterday, and we went over uh, some of uh, the issues on this. I think it's very laxed. Uh, well, kind, of, it's too, kind, uh, kind of wide open, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's yeah. wide open, and there is a lot of uh, stuff that they're putting in there that really does not qualify for whatever we yeah. intend to do with that. So, and I think we wouldn't want to see that. Right. Yeah. So I don't mind doing something like that, but <clears throat> possibly more definite definition, a clear definition yeah. of what they intend to do. Um, and I would ask the board then if they would just contact me or maybe email the town attorney. Some of these uses I'm not crazy right. about. 
and maybe if you'd give us some idea what you'd like to see removed and then we can clean this up a little bit and uh, and this is because we'll be hopefully, I guess, Tom, at the, at the voting meeting, we'll be setting the public hearing on these. Right. What I'll do is uh, wait for a few days for comments, but I, you know, spoke with the councilman yesterday, and, you know, I'll, so I'm, I'll circulate a pared down language yeah. on it, and then that would be what yeah. would be in the packets for the next meeting. What we would consider. Yeah. I think we should, instead of alternative care, just assisted living, the definition of I that, so. and then go but, to it. I yeah. think that'd be better. Okay. Sounds good. Any any other thoughts on that law? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the other law we actually pulled out and dusted off. That's why it says in the matter of the application of PREI, Popo Junction Associates, this is actually a law that we had uh, proposed for the uh, IBM West complex some years ago. Uh, PREI was famous for wanting to do things and then falling off the face of the earth and never coming back. Uh, so we did propose this 194-67.2 creation of certain lots within the I-1 light industrial zoning district uh, to allow flexibility in the creation of certain lots within the I-1 district. Um, so we took this out, and this is a law that I would like to ask the board to consider, uh, not necessarily the petition part, but you'll see it really actually starts there after number six on 194-67.2. Um, in the bold, I would like to consider this to apply this to the uh, the West Complex now owned by Linnell, and I also like to allow this to be applied to the uh, the IBM West, the Hudson Valley Research Park, also because, as I said, um, one of the things in that area we need to do is is to encourage redevelopment, and this gives a, some flexibility. So uh, that's why I brought this out, and I'd like to have that. And that we'd also set the the uh, the public hearing at the end of this month. So did anybody ever have thoughts on that law or any questions for the Board of the Attorney while we have it here? Again, if you don't have them tonight, you can certainly contact the attorney anytime. Again, John, on this issue of here, I met with a town lawyer yesterday and I had a lot of questions regarding this. Uh, mm -hmm. <clears throat> excuse me. I, uh, I, I went back on this petition and it's quite old. Uh, I'm all for the development of that area. <laughs> and uh, rezoning it. But uh, I think it should be uh, put together. Uh, uh, first of all, I would like to see the petitioner put something forward at this time. Mm -hmm. This is a company that is no longer in existence. No. Uh, so before we actually, I mean, for a matter of discussion, I don't mind mm -hmm. to look at this, but I actually would like to, to see uh, another petition put together uh, with the specifics. Uh, of, of what the intent is. Mm -hmm. uh, again, I have nothing against, but it, presenting this to the board, it's, yes, it's an idea, but it was very confusing when I got this document. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, like I say, the petition part was just their petition. Um, in the uh, one, with the 194.67.2 is really the actual, the, the actual law. No, I, I understand that my only problem with this whole thing is, is I hate to sit here and wait for a petitioner to have to come to petition us, and I'd like to kind of get out in front of this, and that, that's why I'm bringing this law back uh, myself on behalf of the town for getting the petition part, but the really 194-67.2. I would like for the town to allow the flexibility. You know, it, it's a funny thing when you look at zoning. You look at zoning. We, we adopted zoning, I think it was in June of 1964. Um, now, take zoning. Zoning is land use. We, we proposed land use back in June of 1964. Back in 1964, we allow horses. Uh, two acres, I think it's two acres for the first horse, an acre for every horse thereafter, something like that but six acres for chickens. So I said, well, boy, back in 1964, they must have had a problem with chickens, but they didn't have a problem with horses, you know? But the problem is when you're trying to imagine the needs as with that example of the horses and the chickens, you know, I say, we're making these rules and I don't want our rules to stand in the way of what could be redevelopment. We could wait and absolutely, I'm sure within the next two years, somebody will come to petition us for just such a law. I would much rather, and this is my, and if the board disagrees with me, I have no problem with that, but this is my frame of mind is that if we adopt this law, 
people will come, companies will come in and look at it and say, this is flexible, we can do this. If you do it the other way and you wait for them to come and petition us, my concern is, okay, you're adding another th two, three months onto the process. You know what I mean? I'm trying to, to be ahead of it. I, uh, I totally agree with that. I, I don't know how the rest of the board feels about this, but this is such a big decision that we're making over here. Red zone in this old park, park, park area that it, it was industrial at one time. Mm -hmm that uh, it has to be a little bit clearer, the intent. I know what we're trying to do. But this document over here, even though the law states in there, it's... Well, mm -hmm. well if I may, I'm I think you, actually, yeah. if you, you just look at pages three, four, and five, or really just the... That's I think this, this was what was submitted in 06. This was when a property owner wants to change the zone, they submit a petition. I think what the supervisor wants to try to do is if you just take pages three, four, and five and consider this on the board's own for adding these provisions and basically maybe we should just run through what they are. We're not changing the zoning. It's still an I zone. It's an I-1 zone. But this kind of modernizes some of the concepts. It does uh, three or four things. First thing is it gives the planning board a little more flexibility when somebody comes in for a site plan approval in an I zone, which would be basically the West Complex yeah. and um, IBM, the flexibility to um, consider not having them build 5,000 parking spaces. If they come in, that's going to be a storage facility. Uh, sometimes these standard parking things require overbuilds. So this gives the planning board flexibility to look at the, what the industry is doing in the, you know other towns other areas it also allows uh, for the area to be developed I, I'll describe it like a business condominium type property where the buildings uh, could be separately owned on separate property but all the parking would be a common area that all the buildings would share because many of our big companies nowadays they don't want to be a tenant in the building, they want to own the building, but they don't mind paying like a common charge to take care of the maintenance. So this would give authority to do that, to have the buildings on their own lot as long as there's agreements about the parking. It also allows for uh, when you have these massive industrial buildings that if they want to come in and do a, uh, a modification to the building up to 4,000 square feet, but not for additional office space if it's for utilities, things like that. They can go through just through the building department and be allowed to do a 4,000 square foot uh, modification to the footprint of the building, but only for utilities or non-occupancy type things. So that's the, the flexibility that would be. So it really would be pages three, four, and five that we'd be considering. And, and Councilman, I, can, I understand your concern um, Again, this would only apply to this certain area, number one. And I think what we're, and let me just talk, what we're seeing as, as with when the zoning originally came in, these were actually two large industrials, actually one indu large industrial site all owned by IBM. But as we see with IBM downsizing and, and there's so many vacancies over there, um, this just allows a flexibility to it a building is to be sold off or something like that and somebody to come in. And I think like Tom says, some of the big develop not the big developers, but the big corporate players out there want to own their own building. So that's just the flexibility this would allow. Um, and again, it's only for that area. So I, I just qualify that. Any other thoughts on the board? Well, my, my um, thought about it was when we pass the priority economic redevelopment zone, this will work hand in hand. The whole idea for us to pass that resolution is to loosen up flexibility, flexibility there, so yeah. we can invite more companies to come in. Different companies they want to own their they want to own their property and building. They don't want to lease it from IBM. Yeah. So this, to me, is like the next step yeah. after we pass that resolution. No, I, I would agree. I think it would be the next logical step. Again, we could wait for somebody to petition, but also that's a turn off to to under the people that are you know entities that want to come in. You're adding more layers of well, yes, you can come in, but we have to pass this law. If we do it up front, I just think we're we're being more proactive, and that's, so, that's really it. In other words, what we're looking at is uh, uh, rezoning the uh, 194-67. 
I don't think we, is it we're the not whole rezoning. Every zone is just it's, a modification. We're it's adding this to the code to give this flexibility. The property is still going to be an I-1 zone. It's still subject to the uses that are allowed in an I-1 zone. Uh, this just allows those kind of planning things, that the buildings can be separate, those 4,000 square foot things like that. So we're taking all that three, four, and five. So that's uh, the only thing that would be considered. Mm -hmm. Should be as is, or should there? Well, no. Be, obviously, it's you know subject to tweaking or changing. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, I think anything that makes that land more desirable is just a benefit for the town. I, I'm I'm in favor of this. Okay. Uh, Peter, any thoughts? Well, they still have to come in for. I mean, oh. we're going to have to change laws galore if they're going to build. We're still going to have to change to build a dome, aren't we? Yeah. That's yeah. right. That's uh, You referred that to the planning board for discussion and the planning board making comments back to you. And that's to modify we have the special permit for outdoor, large scale outdoor recreation, recreation, which is yeah. how the golf driving range was yep. created. So the uh, that permit is going to be modified to allow indoor outdoor large scale recreation. Yeah. That's, that's going to be tweaked again. But it's a special permit, which is just special requirements that apply within a regular district where it's allowed. This would only be in the I-1 zone, yep. as would the dome type. Right. Yeah. And Tom, when we make this law, we can actually make it apply to just the, that area, correct? Well, it's that, and also it has a minimum lot size of 150 acres. Yeah. Uh, so it has, you know, it's really geared to to that sort of the large big industrial, industrial site. Yeah. So if we had an I-zone down 82, it's not going to qualify because it doesn't meet the conditions. Unless it has 100, and it also yeah. has to be on state highway uh, at least one state highway and right. uh, has to have a si at least one of which will be sig signalized. So. All right, so this yeah. works in conjunction with the resolution we passed. Yeah, yeah. and, and, I, and I, I, I'd like to, I would like to think in the intent because we need to... Spark. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. So uh, do we have time to uh, look this over? Oh, absolutely. We're just going to set, I, I would think that uh, the voting meeting uh, will be setting the public hearing, and we're going to have plenty of time for us to discuss that. Uh, discuss and the public the hearing attorney. couldn't be until June, because yeah. you have to go through a yeah. process before Yeah, we we'll have to do yeah. secret and all. So all right. this will allow the board to be more than comfortable with what we propose. So next time we see this document, uh, it will be pared down to just those three pages, yeah. and then you can make whatever other changes you want to do. Yeah. Sure, absolutely. Okay. So then we'll move forward with that. And, and again, I just I think it's in our best interest to be proactive. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, number three on the agenda for discussion tonight is an unsafe building. We have a, a memorandum. Uh, Town engineer's memo uh, about this, this uh, house that is in, uh, located at 26 Fisher Hook Road in Wicopee. Um, and I'd spoken with the building department previously about it. The property owner had been notified back in February about concerns. Uh, and then the, the, this has been a very devastating winter. The actual the snow loads uh, collapsed the roof and portions of second story collapsed into the house. Uh, Let's see, February 1st, uh, February 20, on February 21st and on March 4th. Uh, we inspected the site on April 1st, found that the roof and portions of the second story had collapsed on the roof. However, two chimneys on either side of the house remained standing. The chimney and exterior wall, if you look at it on the north side of the house, look kind of leaning towards the hook road. And in our mind, this does present a dangerous situation that the wall chimney could actually fall into the utility lines in the roadway. Um, the engineer has proposed that as an interim measure is recommended that the wall chimney are collapsed back into the house to eliminate any potential interference with the adjacent utility lines or roadway. Uh, my office has received several calls from concerned citizens because when you come down Fishkill Hook Road, you stop at the stop sign and the house is right, right there. there. Uh, I've spoke with the property owner who is in the audience tonight about this. Um, relaying the, the very need to uh, to take action on this. Um, it's a concern to me. Um, it's a concern of public safety. And that's my problem. If anybody is out and about, take a ride up at Wicopee, it's right across from General Store. It's on the left as you head up the hook. Um, and we've had, we've had situations like this in the past uh, where we have actually had houses taken down, but we've never had one so close to a road. 
We've had them in the past where they were not this kind of a danger. It was a danger was to the property itself or anybody. Else. This is actually, in my mind, and I and I, the, the engineer agrees. This is a very big concern because of public safety, people, and a public roadway uh, and utility lines. What we could do, and Tom might have to ask, um, how do we? We would go. We could go about actually having this house taken down ourselves. We have that authority. We had yes, done that there's in the a process past. you have to go through. The yes. process is notification. Correct. Based on an engineer's report, then the town board would note, direct that notice be given to the property owner. Uh, and if the property owner failed to comply with the order, then the town can have it done. It's leaned back in the tax system. Yeah. Yep. And there are certain time frames for Correct. Uh, uh, the property owner to get back and stuff like that. Um, and understanding a property owner's position, I don't mean to be heartless to the property owner. Certainly we want to work with a property owner. But I have to say that this is a, creates, a, in my mind, a hazard to public safety. And I think the town has a responsibility to act. So I would ask the board, I would think, at the voting meeting to start that process, but working along with the property owner so the property owner understands that we don't mean to do this ourselves. We would rather he, they, took it, they took care of this problem. But I don't think that we can just wait for this all to happen. I mean, I'm very concerned about public safety. So take a ride by, let me know what you think. And uh, I would put it on the agenda to start the process. And obviously, any time in the process, the homeowner, the property owner can step in and resolve it. I'm fine with that. The property owner doesn't want to go forward to. Oh, we've spoken with the property owner. He's very willing. He's waiting. There's insurance issues, there's attorney issues, and he's very willing to do this. Um, in all due respect to the property owner that we've gotten to this point, I find a bit concerning. And I, I will leave it at that. Um, we shouldn't be at this point, but now we are at this point. And I don't, my problem is we are to the point where I consider it has become a public hazard. You know? So if the property owner is put on notice that this is a public hazard, if something happened, he's liable. Well, I don't know. Now the, the so might we. So might be. Uh -huh. yeah. Now the property owner had been served a remedial order. I believe it was back in February. I believe a court summons has gone out. The property owner has been duly notified. If the board might remember yeah. about two years ago, well, it happened before that, but there was a, a tree on mm -hmm. Shenandoah Road, which was not on town property, but it was adjoining the road, and the tree fell and struck a car that was going by. And so obviously they sued the property owner for the tree, but they also sued the town. And it, right now, the law in New York State says that if the town becomes aware of a danger to the traveled way, even if it's not on their property, the town becomes responsible once the town has notice of that or should have had notice of it. So this is why yes. all communities are being a little more cautious when every, anything is, even if it's not physically in the right of way, if it has the Ability. possibility to fall into the right of way because we're all, our roads are open for people to drive and mm -hmm. they accept the, the fact that we're, we're all keeping safe. it safe. Yeah, right. so. The roads are our assets. So. Yeah. Well, we did this a couple of years ago with a piece of property on top of the mountain. Mm -hmm. And we just did it recently over our Flower Road, didn't we? Yes. No, we in that vicinity? That one. We had talked about that one on Flower. I don't think... Is that the one with the, the fence one that we around? Put the it? fence around? Yeah, no, it, that he fenced it based on the order. That yeah. was it. He had, because under the dangerous building law, you have to do one of two things: either you make the building safe, or you demolish it if there's no other way to do it. Yeah. So, <clears throat> that, that that one got rectified. It took a right. few months. One was demolished because it was in danger of collapse, and the other one uh, was going to be demolished, but then he put a fence up to keep the public away from it. That was, and both of them were attractive nuisances where people could be attracted to it, to break into it, start a fire, things like that. They weren't close enough to the road to fall, but they presented other hazards that's recognized. Okay, so what I would propose to the board, number one, first and foremost, I would like to work with the property owner. But being as this is a, this is a concern of public safety, I think that we need to start the process also of just having the town having removed. And, and just so then what this first step is just to send notice, a formal notice, and give 
30 days notice and, and indicate that if there's a disagreement at the end of the 30 days, the property owner has the right to make his or her case to the board that, mm -hmm. you know, your engineer is not right, it's not structural, you know, come in with structural engineer, whatever. And then if the board still isn't satisfied, you would then, uh, if you were going to go forward, adopt an order giving the property owner an additional period of time to, to comply before the yeah. town stepped in. So it's, I think the supervisor is just concerned that while you can work with the property owner, you have to get the clock started so that. Because there are these uh, periods of time that we have to wait anyway, so. And it's very concerning. All right, um, that will be on the agenda for the voting meeting. And if you would all just make yourselves available out to Wikipedia and just take a look and so that you guys can get an idea of, 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 the, of the issue here. Uh, all right, and uh, last for discussion, we had gotten copies of recreation facility fees. Uh, the first one we had discussed at the last voting meeting, we had um, awarded bids for recreation facilities. The one bid we did not get, I don't, oh, well, we got a bid, but they didn't meet the 1,000 minimum bid uh, for the uh, Red Wing, Red Wing concession, concession. stand bid. Mm -hmm. um, we had gotten one bid, but they didn't meet the $1,000 bid, minimum bid. Um, they That bidder has requested that we lower it to $500. I guess there have been some issues, being Red Wing is a shorter season, Basically, Memorial Day to Labor Day and it's very weather driven. Um, they've asked for a decrease in the minimum bid. So, we've gotten this letter uh, from our legislative aide on behalf of this uh, person that made the bid. And I didn't know if anybody wanted to consider that. Uh, something we would consider again at the voting meeting. One, one thing I'd like to look into. Mark, Mark might be able to answer. Oh, all Mark's the, right here. I know, that's why I'm asking. He's, he's, the, he's the money man. He's the money man. Is there a way to break down all these different little concession areas to get a ballpark? I know we can't get an exact number on what the electric is that this booth uses, that booth over there uses, or the one over on 52 use. But we should be able to get a ball without a special meter. But is there a way we can get a ballpark idea of what they actually use in electric? You know, because we can compare when they're open and when they're not open. Boy, I'm glad I'm not Mark. <laughs> because what, well, <laughs> perhaps. I want to know, we're getting, we get $1,000 or $500 to put somebody in business for but a I year. Think this one uh, has a separate meter, I think. Yeah, this one does. This one, yeah. yeah right. well, so why don't we check the meter readings? We'll do is check uh, the other two. Because we'd be at the 500 plus they pay their own electric. This yeah. one they're going to pay 500 plus their electric? Yeah. I mean, that's all I'd like to see because some of these, I mean, we're in business to help people, but I'm not in business to give you a free place to run your business and on top of that pay 20% of your electric bill. You know, is what I'm wondering. So if we could get a ballpark idea of what the other two facilities use, you know, if it turns out they're using $1,500 worth of electric, then, the, then it's got to go up. It's not worth, yeah. uh, well, it's not worth say, it to us. Yeah. Let me let me let me save Mark here. Um, but this one, I think we could because I think there is a, a yes, meter there. A plus that, yeah. So we this could means. actually we could request from uh, one of our one of our clerks to take a look at Central Hudson bills, find out what the typical bill is for Memorial Day. To well, Labor I think Day. last year that was the confusion because um, the meter was put in and then the uh, the vendor paid for the meter being put yeah, in. Yeah, and we wired. had to reimburse them for the meter. Right, but so it is there now. So <laughs> yeah, we hadn't had a meter in the past. Correct. Which is a very Correct. good point. Right, right. Right. And that's the problem with, say, out here at the uh, main complex, we don't have a separate meter for that. So that becomes a bit of a challenge. Probably at the soccer complex, we probably do. Yeah. Because I mean, I, I just like to get yeah. a ballpark idea. I mean, yeah. yeah, you need these places at all these places. Yeah. I mean, we need food concessions, and they are doing us a favor. But I'd like to get a ballpark idea. I mean, a favor's a favor, but if they're costing you three thousand dollars worth of electric, and well, <laughs> if you don't mind, Peter, if we do, because we've had this discussion before, let us check right now because the other two bids have been awarded for the. Yeah, no, I agree. But uh, let us start on this one, and what we'll do, Mark, would you mind tomorrow contacting the clerk? Yeah, not at all. And just see if we get those numbers for that concession, uh, so we can stop down and get the meter number off of that. No problem. Well, no, this one they pay plus electric, so it doesn't matter. They pay 500 plus the electric bill. Yeah, I wrote a note on mine because last year that was the issue. That was the issue. In your resolution. Okay. Yeah. 
No, no, no. So I know okay, we're not, so we're I know we're not losing money on that one. Okay. That's, that's not, so you're just really worried about I'm really worried about some complexes. of the other two. Okay. So this is something because, again, we, yeah, we we've already sure. We've talked there. about it before. Yeah. 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 Okay. We'll, we'll, get, we'll see if we can get that information. The one in the main complex is a challenge because I don't believe there's a separate meter. No, there probably isn't. But uh, let's see what we can do. I'm just thinking how we could do that with the one in the main complex, but we'll talk about that further. Um, Take a look, see what you think about if you if you'd be consider if you'd like to consider dropping the bid for Red Wings. So we do have so many concessions there, and uh, and we'll we'll take that up at the voting meeting. If you if you really don't think we should, please let me know. Um, I don't want to waste anybody's time, but I do think it's a it's a tough one there again because it's a shorter season and because of the weather. You can have a hot summer, you can have a cold summer, and nobody comes there. So it's a it's really I wouldn't want to be bidding on. It. I think it's a tough tough one to bid on. So. So, but that will be coming up, and all these these four discussion uh, items will be on the voting the agenda for the voting meeting at the end of the month. All right. Any other questions and any items on the uh, discussion? Okay. All right. There being none, uh, we do have liaison reports. John, was there one more? Did I miss? Yeah. Recreation yeah. facility yeah. fees, unsafe buildings, zoning laws, canon RFP. Schedules. Did, did I not get like just the one with all the schedules? The schedule fee? Yeah. I, I think she uh, proposed some changes seven, to the uh, veteran. And some of the schedules. Yeah. Mm -hmm. passes. Oh. All right. Now you get back to that one. The they controller has, the 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 controller has like corrected me. Wrong. That's the last time I saved the controller, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Mark could have politely said, we're fine, John, and then afterwards he could have said something like, oh, you forgot one. Well, no, I've got it here. He's sure. driving the bus. He there just backed go. up and ran you right over. I know. I know. <laughs> oh, I, I do apologize. Yes, I did have this written down, the other piece, and I just kind of got stuck on that one. Thank you, Controller Osniak. Okay. Uh, yes, we did have the veterans be uh, My apologies on that one. I know that uh, at the Lime Kiln... Uh, recreation facility. There was a, a proposal to, uh, and also Rock, Red Wing and Lime Kiln proposals to uh, grant veterans with veterans ID cards and active duty veterans with active ID cards free free individual passes at both Lime Kiln and Red Wing. And I believe we're going to give um, provide the families yeah. with half price passes. So, and I think that's a a very nice, a very good thing to do. Um, discussion, uh, you okay with that, Mark? As controller, I think that'd be. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a significant benefit to them, and it's not a significant cost to us because okay. I think the, it's the numbers aren't great enough to okay. impact. All right, anybody on the board? Any discussion? Any questions about it? Just reviewing some of the fee schedule proposed. Um, at Lime Kiln, the facility rentals, the tent, the Crew 376 Complex Pavilion, and the gazebo, the non-residents pay the same. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Only in the gazebo, the non-resident pays the same as a resident. Mm. So just a note there, that should be changed. Okay. We should take a look at that. Route 376 pavilion. Uh, the gazebo on the one. bottom. Yep. Yeah. yep. They probably m missed it, but. Okay. I'll bring that. Well, I'll bring that to. Oh, uh, the pitches only. They pay twenty dollars. Huh? The gazebo one. Pitches yeah. Only. Yeah. I'll bring that to the rec uh, the rec directors. Uh, probably they just over we'll, we'll over we'll we'll overlooked we'll it, but. That one, yeah. Because they changed all the ones from last year. It was the same. Okay. And this year we made the change that the resident pays less than the non-resident. Right, right. Yep. Okay. Any other discussion on any of these summer camp programs? <laughs> One of the things that I know we have discussed, and kind of along with what Peter had said previously, um, I know with our with the lighting of the fields in the uh, main complex is very expensive, 
and I would like to see if we can get a better idea because it's controlled by another company that is out of state. I don't know how this happened, but it's when they installed the lights. I'd like to see if we can get a little more handle on how much it does actually cost us to operate those floodlights, those those big field lights. Um, so I'd like to look into that also, Peter, if you don't yeah, mind. If I remember, I, they talked about it at one meeting, and I think there's a different price for different months. Is that two, do you remember hearing that? Well, apparently when the, the lights were bid out, that came as part of the package. And I don't know if it's lifetime or whatever, but there's a company yeah. in Indiana or something. In Indiana. Controls yeah. when the lights go on and off and everything else. So can we get, is there any way to get out of that? We'll, we'll have to investigate that. And, and the Mark, last you'll time mind we tomorrow. Forward, it turned out that everyone kind of accepted what the electrical cost was for those lights. It's, you know, yeah, but I'd like to get to the bottom of it and uh, see if we can get a little better handle on that. Because I'm sure when you look at electric bills, that's probably the largest electric bill in the town of East Fishkill. When you look at electric it's, bills over the last couple months. You're Except for sewer. Oh, Mark. Oh, Mark. Did we really need the controller here tonight at this meeting? Oh. And you know what we did? We did talk about. You know, we did get our electric bill just like everybody else. We were none of us are happy with our electric bills, and the town electric bill again is significantly higher than previous years. Um, so I, again, we're looking into doing some solar. I'd like to get a handle on solar. Um, Mark and I discussed it, and maybe I'm thinking just I'm trying to get a handle on the kilowatt hours. I believe that's how they 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 do these things. Kilowatt hours needed for the town hall. I'd like to see if we can get solar panels that start here. If this works, then I'd like to progress out. Um, and just to maybe the community center, maybe Lime Kiln. Um, I'm really very upset with the power companies right now. And uh, if we can have solar to offset, I'd be thrilled. So Mark and I had looked at a couple. And uh, I'm going to get I'm going to get myself uh, the range of kilowatt hours that we need require here and then uh, if we can we'll price it out and bring it to the board and see what the board thinks because not happy with these electric bills as I don't think anybody in Dutchess County is. We put so. windmills up by Tom's house. <laughs> yeah. Well you know you, it's funny that you say that if you go up to Lime Kiln Recreation for some reason the wind never stops there. If we put if we could put a windmill <laughs> at, at, at Lime Kiln I right. think we'd be fine but uh, but I definitely want to look into alternate sources of energy because this is just, just too much. Um, Councilman, was that the only thing in the fees was just the, uh, the, the pavilion? Yeah. Okay, I'll speak with the rec director about that one. We're okay with the um, veterans fees. I think that's a really appropriate thing to do for our veterans. So, Okay, very good. Uh, Controller Posniak, may I move on? You're all clear, John. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I, feel like, uh, I feel like I'm taking off here, so. All righty. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Um, I think we're to the point in the meeting for liaison reports. Peter, any reports on our highway department and how are they doing? Uh, doing good. We're not snow. We're not plowing snow anymore. We're not thank doing goodness. snow anymore, but they did come up with a new item, a couple new items. Uh, they've been working on repairing the catch basins, clean repairing the catch basins, and right now there's still about 50 more that need to be repaired. Wow. There's good news for you. And you know, and when you, being, knowing a little bit about the highway department, I mean, when they say 50, these are immediate need. Yeah. Yeah. yeah 50 so. more that are still in immediate need. Uh, and they've also been working on pothole repairs as well, because for some reason, potholes came up this winter with the nice winter we had. Uh, they stopped using patch, cold patch, because the good news is the blacktop plants are open. Oh, good. And that's the two main things they're doing right now. And on one other thing that isn't there under highway, uh, town cleanup day, very successful. Uh, probably had 50, 60 people show up here. Plus we had groups show up at two other fields. Um, I'd like to thank Royal Carding for supplying the dumpster, East Fishkill Provision for supplying lunch, and Hopewell Hot Bagels for supplying breakfast. And that's yeah. their commercial that they get. No, they are very good. It's very, <laughs> very big supporters of our We're gonna of our townwide up. cleanup. Um, just a little quick note about townwide cleanup. I know our, our police department always cleans up Lime Kiln Road, and this year they were cleaning up. They saw some documents off to the side of the road that looked kind of official. So then they clean up a little further. They found a safe that got dumped. 
So we'll leave it to our police department to find a safe that had been stolen in Connecticut. They got the safe open and they dropped it off here. So as part of townwide cleanup, we've actually solved the, the crime. crime. So this is a wonderful thing. I didn't, you know, this townwide cleanup is a good thing. So. And how all the fingerprints on it belong to their office? <laughs> <laughs> no, they were the gloves you supplied them, so they're very thankful of that. So, uh, and one thing I would note that in the governor's budget that he just passed, um, for some reason the governor felt compelled to give all the municipalities a little bit of extra money for the severe winter. They called it severe winter highway funding, and the town of East Fishkill is going to get thirty-five thousand dollars. So, don't tell Dennis. <laughs> I'd say he's already spent it. Every, every little bit helps, Governor. Every little bit helps, but we're nowhere near mandate relief. So, but we do appreciate the extra money. So, thank you, Peter. Thank well, you, uh, Councilman D'Alessandro, Planning and Zoning. Uh, yeah, well, we're getting busy in the planning department. A lot of projects coming. Everybody knows about the dome, and that 52 corridors, you know, bustling a little bit. Yeah. You know, another I, application coming forward. Yeah, it's it's interesting you say that because I was in planning today and they said, gee, we're getting awful busy. And very good. I, I'm hopeful that this dome project is actually a catalyst for bringing other businesses in because it's very good to hear that our planning board is getting busy. Absolutely. And uh, Tom, how's the uh, cell tower appeal going? Uh, it actually, it's before a federal judge and uh, the... Um, our opposition papers are going to be filed next week, and the judge will probably have a decision late summer. Okay. 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 And I had one other thing, um, that there is a fraud alert going on. Uh, they're mainly targeting businesses. Uh, persons are calling, claiming that they are with Central Hudson and that um, my favorite company they are going to close your that you're in default of your bill um, if you don't pay within 45 minutes they're going to come and shut your electric and gas minutes. down yeah wow. so uh, after I, I actually got this on Monday so I was speaking to the gentleman and I said well I set my payment in so I don't understand he say they're saying that you getting a notice you're supposed to get a notice 30 days ago that Central Hudson it was no longer accepting they were changing their payment systems so they couldn't accept the check that you sent or if you paid by credit card that you had to go to greenpointbank.com and make a money transfer wow and it had to be immediate so, you know, after I heard that, I called Central Hudson and they, you know, said that this is a scam. And so wow. everybody knows Central Hudson will not shut your power off like that. They will only, if somebody is in default, they will come in person to speak with you. Really? That is their policy. They will come in person. So, wow. beware. So did you get the deposit me? <laughs> yeah. Right, uh, <laughs> so, you, so, so you actually got the call? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Wow, I'm shocked. It's amazing, you know, that this happens in this day and yeah, age. And so. I called our police department. They yeah. came and took a report. Good. And, yeah. Good, good, good. So everybody be on the lookout for this scam. Central Hudson won't come and shut your power off. No, they won't. Unless they come and visit you in person. That's right. Okay. Well, that's good to know. Good to know. Thank you. Uh, Councilman Franco, uh, recreation, anything on the recreation front? Yeah, we had a, a great meeting Monday night. Uh, we had the opportunity to uh, to meet Dan Frioli and Russ Hernandez from the Kingdom. The, oh, because the, the they did people. say they were going to meet with Rexport. Yes, they wanted to work. They, they expressed interest in working with the recreation department. And um, it, was, uh, it was a great meeting. They answered a lot of our questions, a lot of concerns that some of the, uh, the board members had. And uh, I thought it was a very good meeting, and everybody left, I thought, fairly satisfied. So, right. And we're eager to have them here, okay. and they're eager to work with us. So uh, good deal. we'll see. Sounds promising. It was. It was Sounds very promising. Good. good. Um, how is our fields doing? Any, any update on the fields? Uh, the fields are good. Uh, opening day is um, Saturday. Saturday. And I think we just secured uh, the police chief to throw out the first pitch. Oh, no kidding. Yep. So. Wow. Oh, good. And the parade. That's right. The parade in the morning at 9. Okay. The parade starts at 9. Where does it start? Down by Trinka? Uh, down by Trinka. Okay. Yeah. And so. the field, field 1. Okay. Yeah. Oh, excellent. Yeah. I hope the weather is, is, is we with us. Soccer should be open. Everything should be, should be good to go. Excellent. Boy, I tell you, after that, this winter. Oh, the kids are dying to be outside. Yeah, and besides, and I, never thought, I never thought the snow was going to go away. It's just like, wow, an opening day is coming up. But mm -hmm. uh, 
Good to hear. Good so to they're going to close 82, right? Yes. You want. Uh, closing down 82, uh, probably before 9 o'clock. Okay. When the parade starts. And then the parade starts at 9 o'clock, ends mm -hmm. up at Field 1. Ends up at Field 1. Excellent. Right around 10. Oh, sounds good. Sounds good. Hope the weather's good for us. Good. Council Member Marinero, Hillside Lake Special Park District. Oh, well, not much to report, um, except that uh, one test uh, that was done on one of the wells that uh, came out negative. Yep. And, uh, and that's good news. Uh, catch basin we cleaned. And um, possible uh, retesting in the near yeah. future, but. Yeah, good. That's what we're at. Yeah, and that, that, that negative was it was very good news. Certainly keeping an eye on this and uh, trying our best to make sure this is a health safety issue, so uh, certainly uh, stay on top of it. So very good, very good. Anything else? Basically, uh, we're going to have our uh, monthly meeting, uh, I believe it's next week. Okay. We'll attend that and see what their concerns are. Okay. And bring it to the board next time that we meet. Good. Very good. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. I guess that's all that I have. I did. Uh, oh, please! I should do please. I know I announced about the safe. That was kind of a that that went along down cleanup. Um, I went. I attended the uh, police meeting. We had a uh, we have a monthly meeting of, of our police officers at the little town hall once a month. We meet, and, and I have to tell you, it's you know it's run by our chief of police, Chief Nichols, uh, with input from you know the lieutenants, the captain sergeants and uh, everybody I got to tell you how impressed I am with our police department um, just keeping everybody up on the latest news latest procedures and policies changes and regulations and uh, it was a very productive meeting but I think the one thing that does impress me so much is that everybody's so dedicated and, and they are very professional in, in how they handle themselves and the the uh, you know the information that's given out is is very very good so very good meeting unfortunately um burglaries are up and the heroin is an epidemic you know the hard drug uses is, is a terrible thing uh i'm glad to see the cape the council on addiction preventive i can't really recall what cape stands for council on addiction preventive oh forgive me for that one but anyway cape is is, is doing public uh, presentations throughout the county and they are a great group so uh, this drug abuse is a very, very big scourge, and uh, hopefully CAPE and education and things in the schools will help us with this problem. But uh, the police are, are very good on it. So I uh, just wanted to thank them for all their work. Uh, with that, I have nothing else to report tonight. Uh, the next town, boarding, town board meeting excuse me, is April 24th, 2014. And uh, John, that, I have, uh, absolutely, I have a couple of uh, announcements, a couple of statements that I want to Sure. I want to read to the to the board. Uh, I would like to take the opportunity to thank uh, our hardworking uh, local assemblyman uh, uh, Kieran Michael Lawler for his recent accomplishment for the elimination of the corporate income tax on all the manufacturers for the counties in New York State. This is definitely a small step in the right direction for the small business community, but much more needs to be done. As our town supervisor mentioned many times in the past, unfunded mandates have uh, to be put on the table for the serious discussions uh, at the state level. Thank you again, uh, Mr. Lower. Um, I have prepared another short statement. Just give me one minute. We'll go through this. Uh, tonight, I'm very pleased to hear that uh, the members of the town of East Fishkill Board and our town supervisor are doing whatever it takes to welcome and create a new business for our town and our citizens. This is great and it must continue. Our job should be to open the doors and make it simple for company of any size to do business in our community. We can't, we can't forget that business is the fuel of our local economy. In order for our community to survive and continue to grow without the addition of tax burdens to, indiv to the individual homeowners, I strongly believe that uh, if the leaders of our community, together with all the departments, example, the building, assessors, finance, legal, and all different review and regulatory boards of our town, all will work for the same goal, then and only then we will achieve, achieve great things for this fish scale. 
lastly and more importantly, it has to be made very clear that uh, what these leaders tonight do for a certain cer sector of our society has to be uniform and speedy for all local business. We could not and should not accommodate big corporations while at the same time not do the same for the local builders, contractors, or local developers that for years are trying to put a project forward while doing backward flips. Again, I want to remind our community leaders here tonight that our town has been done down this road before with IBM, who for years have received taxpayers' dollars and all kinds of government favors, not mention the, the environmental permanent damage to our localities, and then decide to cut jobs and leave East Fishkill for more profitable grounds. Let's not forget that the small business community is the backbone of our local economy and infrastructure, and that we should cherish them because they are our neighbor, my mechanic, my dentist, my favorite restaurant, my physical therapist, and so on. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. And you That's wrote that? That was from you? Yes. Okay. Um, unfortunately, I feel the need to respond. Um, understanding that we need small business as well as big business. Um, I've always said that corporations like IBM are the anchor store. Had we not had IBM here, IBM, you know, when you talk about IBM, you talk about tax breaks, and I disagree totally with New York State tax system and how it's set up. I have huge problems with this, but I, and I understand that IBM invested $4 billion into the site over there back in 2004, and a lot of it, the breaks were given on sales taxes and certain taxes during the construction. It employed a lot of people in that, and when you look at IBM, as I say, as our anchor store, there's a big ripple effect, which is never counted in as far as you, you know, when you look at the numbers for, they based, they based the IDA grants and, and tax breaks on headcount, which I think was a fallacy in the beginning. They should never have done on headcount. Because if you consider what IBM does, there's a ripple effect throughout the community. Uh, if uh, IBM hires uh, truck drivers, shippers, uh, vendors that service all of their, so there is a larger, you know, you can just say IBM, and yes, they're down to 3,500 people, but they are a much bigger part of the community in, in, in the ripple effect throughout the economy. Um, I agree that I'd like to see home building come back. Um, I would say, you, and you know, the thing is, home building, house building has always been a staple of the town of East Fisher economy. We were a ra railroad town, uh, we were agrarian, we had a lot of farms, IBM came in, and we started doing uh, a lot of small local builders started building, which was great. Um, unfortunately, in the 90s, Toll Brothers came in and big corporate guys came in, and now you're seeing instead of a 30 a 30 lot subdivision, you're seeing 200 lot subdivisions, which has really changed things also. Um, I agree that we need to support our local businesses. I also think that we need to encourage large businesses to come in, and that's what I have to say. Um, and one last thing, yes, you need to make it business friendly, but you do not give away the store. Because again, you know, as IBM, as you point out, IBM did contaminate the water over in Shenandoah. They're continually pumping. They pump a million gallons a day, pump and filter. Shenandoah, they built a, 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 I forget, $3 million pumping plant to do just that up on Shenandoah. They're doing very well with it. Should never have happened in the first place. Um, but they are stepping up to take care of that. Um, yeah, it's tough. You need the big business, you need the small business, and you need some amount of regulation to make sure we don't do that to the environment again. So and that's all I'd like to say, Councilman. But we do need to move forward and uh, do what we can. I agree. So, all right. Uh, can I get off my soapbox now? Is everybody okay if I just close this and go home? Yeah. Okay. Thank oh, you very much. Good. And I don't have, oh, I have a gavel. Thank you very much for coming tonight.